Well, it's Friday night in Brenham. You're at the best beer garden in the whole damn world, everybody. You picked a great night to be here. Our drummer, Turbo, is sober for a change. And our bass player did not forget his pants today. Sorry, ladies. Action! All right, nicely done. Finally, we've got a professional in here. Yeah. Welcome to Summercast, episode Stop Some Numbers, baby. 223. Wow. <laughs> is that the one after 222? I believe it is. Hell yeah. All right, that's a wrap. Thanks, kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we are. We're on the way to uh, actually, we, uh, I'm actually representing today. Look at that. Hey, hey. Home Sweet Farm, Beer Garden in uh, Brenham, Texas. 8.30. Well, of course, it's all past tense now. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Kids, they make Bluebell ice cream in <laughs> Brenham, Texas. That place. <laughs> Go get yourself a proper drink. Something, something good, good to eat. At Home Sweet Farm in Brenham, Texas. I'll tell you why. Cameron and uh, Julia do an insane job with that place. Great bands, great staff, great stage, great weather, great. I mean, they're responsible for all that. Uh, I should be in a place tonight in, uh, close to Houston, and I'm not going to give any names here, but there's a concert in the north side of Houston tonight, and I was going to have to be there, except we're here. So I am so delighted to see you. Because the concert is, let's just call it Maeve Dathews. Yes. Right? Yeah. I would prefer to see Satan torturing me for eternity than go see that guy for five minutes. Thank you all so much. Thank you. So, yes. we're going to do a song by Dave Matthews. All right. This is off his third album. It's called Please. Somebody put an end to this misery. This is Turbo's second time, right? Yeah. 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 So this how, was one of our first yeah, I know. shows, I think. How's your, uh, how's your, uh, give us your impression of that place your first time in? Dude, way cool. I think last time we played here, I was like, I'm moving here, getting a house yeah. here, it was yeah. chill. And I uh, love the, the kind of the backyard environment of the place. See, Brendan's got a really nice feel to it. Yeah. It does. Yeah, I like the downtown, like the girls. Old, old town America, old Americana yeah. feel. and. Just good people are just the, the audience. They're just so ready to just have experience the show, and not they're not distracted. They're just totally focused on. It. Yeah, and uh, I said we're all friends here, right? Yeah. All right, a little bit louder than that. We're friends here, right? Yeah. All right, that's it. That's Brenham. All right, that's what we do here. Here's an out. Here's a question just from out of the field from me for a change. Compare this to I have a place in mind. Try to compare it to another place that we play. Hibernia comes to mind. Because well, okay. why is that? Attentiveness of the, of the crowd. Yeah, and the, good just correlation. The, just overall character of the people who go there. They're just yeah. all very friendly and, and you know, it's just all we about do, live We music. do have a uh, Hibernia gig coming up. We, we just did. booked it. Check out blackguards.com. fourth. Yes, yes it is. I have a place at, at Turbo. Do you have a place that... I think, I mean... The, the, the reason why I'm asking this is question, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, foes, Patreon, Home Sweet Farm, Brenham, Texas, is a not just a very, very laid back music first venue, but it's it's such a it's such a unique spot for music and for for meet you know for friend meetups and blah blah blah. You know, just I like in, in, in this old historic downtown setting. So, so the place I'm talking about, the place that I, I it reminds me of is uh, in North Carolina. It's called Jack of the Woods. Oh, yes. And the reason why, it, and this is an indoor venue, but the people, like you said, the Hibernia in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, go there if you can, get the curry, the chips, and then Waffle House on your way out in New York. So uh, the place in North Carolina is... Although it's a very, very, very uh, extremely touristy spot, it's so, God, it's just, it, it, they're so into the arts and they're such a bohemian style crowd, you know, very eclectic, very, uh, but I just love 
that they that they just care for the music so much. Yeah. And I've been just ranting and raving for the past couple of years actually about live music. We are losing our live music. And people don't recognize it because they go to see whomever, you know, the big shows. The big shows don't look much different, but the medium and small shows are looking a whole lot different. And I can tell just from the ACL attendance, from the uh, Jazz Fest in New Orleans, uh, from the t- I wasn't there. I just from the pictures I've seen. You can tell it's it, it, it's a lot less. And uh, so, just a long way to say, North Carolina and uh, Home Sweet Farm, Brenham, Texas, uh, very very similar. Yeah, you know, definitely. I, I think maybe the friendliness of the staff yeah. you know there is that uh, place we was it in St. Angelo you know the guy oh, who, yes the dead horse the dead it's horse San, San Angelo San Angelo yeah yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you know just like everyone's just friendly and you know they want they all want to have a good time yeah and, you know I, of course I like I like all the good spots but the, that's a that was a special place LT runs that remember LT yeah yeah so it's a great it's a great venue and we have uh, I have I have one of the loves of my life with with us today, my guitar. My guitar. I'm just kidding. Oh. No, I had my. Uh, I brought. I brought my lovely. Did you say my guitar? Yeah. My oh, guitar. that was good. You're welcome. That's the first time you done that one. Yeah. That's good. First time. First time. Is it? Yeah, I think so. It is. Okay, good. That's a good one. Anyway, <laughs> my lovely daughter filled me today. Thank you, Tara. Yes. And uh, lucky to have her with us tonight. And then um, she's gonna be union next time. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Chad. <laughs> the last time we spoke, we all killed songs too. Have we got songs ready? Oh, yeah. I got one to kill. All right, good, good, good. Shall we kill? Yeah, we shall. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. But before we, before we kill, <laughs> before we kill, let's love before we kill. Kate Scott, again, thank Kate you. Kate Scott, yes, thank you. Again, just always. If you talk about Johnny on the spot, Johnny on the Kate Scott. She Kate is. Scott also. She, she she's a prodigious Sats fan. Like the, the other podcast oh, I yeah, do, like yeah. my friend Brendan, the pop culture podcast. Like us, he's an artist who doesn't make a whole lot of money, and he was complaining on one of the last shows. He doesn't have enough money to go see all the movies he wants to see. So she messaged him privately, got his Venmo, and, and Venmoed him some cash. So For he real? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, she, she is amazing. She, she is. She's not just the biggest heart. She really does. I mean, she looks after. I mean. She, she told us last time I was thanking her for something. It was one of the thousand things she did. And I just thanked her. She said, uh, she said, well, my kid's grown and I'm just, I, I want to, you know, she's a, not just a maternal, but she's just, she really does. She's got, a, we, we had a long conversation. I don't want to, I don't give away too much, but we had a long conversation about this. And she, she did say, I, I don't want any thanks for, she, she's not trying to get any of this stuff. We are just so indebted to her. And I have to also mention, too, as well as the wonderful, irreplaceable Kate Scott, one of the, the, the things that we've forgotten in the in the past few podcasts is we have actually had a bunch of people, uh, just day before yesterday, Kevin Carr sent in someone, you know, uh, just tipped us out of nowhere. And just for all the people that have done that, we've just had people just, you know, we'll, we'll do a, a, a shot from a show or we'll do a Mother's Day thing and somebody had sent us a it just we want to say thank you. It's, it's never overlooked. We truly appreciate all of you. We just can't, we can't say enough, you know. Um, yeah, you know, we we, we 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 do have the everybody says they have the best. We know we have the best people that have, you know, friends because I'm driving on a fucking Jay 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 Holland Star. Thank you, Jay. So back to the killing songs. Is everybody ready? Yeah, who, who wants to go? Yeah, right. Uh, I killed a song last week that was the subject of a lawsuit at Sharon's uh, yes. Thinking Out Loud. He got sued by Marvin Gaye's estate. Good on him. Of course, Marvin Gaye didn't win that one. They should have. <laughs> uh, back to another court case where Marvin Gaye sued somebody else. Uh, Robin Thicke. Her blurred lines. I don't know. I, don't know. I promise you, you've heard it. They got sued by Marvin Gaye's estate for ripping off... Uh, Sounds of heaven. Uh, damn it. Close portable. I was just looking it up and now I've forgotten my stupid brain. Anyway. How a bit of it. Oh, that was a total turbo moment right there. Yeah. <laughs> Total. That's me all the way. And that, that was a case where Marvin Gaye's estate actually won the case. Yeah. So that's the song. Yeah, they definitely ripped off the song. It's the name I can't remember right now. Um, it's a dance dance song. <laughs> they basically ripped off the whole feel and bass line and everything. Anyway, so I'm replacing that with a completely different song that came to mind recently. Guided by Voices. I've resurrected a song of theirs on the show before called I Am a Tree. 
written by Doug Gillard, their guitarist. It's a great song. Anyway, on that same record, it's called Mag Earwig. It's the first record of theirs I ever bought. There's this this is the song, this is the reason why I bought that album in the first place. It's a video for this song was on 120 minutes on TV at the time. Called Bulldog Skin. And it's just a really great, catchy, dirty rock and roll song. And I, I've come to learn that it's not actually a big favorite amongst Guided by Voices fans because it was such a departure from their sound at the time. And what Bob Pollard had done is he went out and hired this band called Cobra Verde. He fired his old band, hired this new band to become his new band, including Doug Gillard. So that's the whole reason I bought the album in the first place. And I still love love that song. And I, I feel bad that other GBV fans can't get into it. Excellent. Nice. Who's next? I'll go next. Charby. So I'm on this kick of killing boring songs. I'm also going to kill a sad song that I just, uh, I just, I, I don't want to listen to a sad song. I don't want to listen to crappy songs. So I'm killing the song Round Here from Counting Crows. Yes. It's just, oh, thank I'm you. Like, I could kill. I could kill. I, I, you know, I don't want to listen to just around here. Yeah, man, I just... That guy's voice is great on that. It's kind of funny, because I remember as a kid when it was like, my parents were like real big, like Rick D's in the weekly top 40. Like we always were outside swimming at the pool and I was playing on the little beatbox machine my parents had. And County Crows were like big when I was younger. You know, yeah. like and they were always on and we would like record Mr. the cassettes Jones, from and Mr. Jones and then you know, so it's, I think I liked it back then, but you just liked that. I, mean, I just liked the environment and fun, but man, that round here it came on and I'm like, oh, I, screw that. Like, I just, ugh. The song I'm gonna resurrect is a band I listen to all the time, uh, Less Than Jake. It's a song called Escape from the Bomb House. It's about, uh, you know, kind of lyrics are about, you don't see eye to eye with your parents and you move out of the house. And I, I just kind of have this time right now with my boys are getting older. And I'm like, man, I remember when I was this age and I, you start to become more independent. And yeah, I try to remember how I was during that time in their shoes. And you know, you, and so that song's, uh, I've been listening to that song this week, but uh, you should check it out. It's good. It's got a good beat to it. You know, that ska feel, but a little more punk rock on, than the ska side of it. but. I like it, and I'm a big fan of that band because I love the dual singers. So that's just one of my favorite things. Excellent. My songs. Excellent. What about you? Me? Yeah. Do you have anything to kill? Uh, kill. Hmm. I'm gonna go with my resurrection first. Okay. Kill. I don't really have any right now. I can. Um, yeah. I, I. I. I can loan you a few. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be good if I don't. If I don't come up with one. But my resurrection would be. Cemetery Polka by Tom Waits. Nice. It's a, such a short and sweet song, but cool. you know, all of his songs sound like they've been in movies you've seen before, but you never really noticed them. And that's exactly how I found a lot of his other songs because he was in some of my childhood favorites, like he was in Shrek 2, very subtly. Um, and he was in Robot, the Robots, the, I think it's a Disney or Pixar, I can't remember which one it was. Uh, we loved, I loved that movie as a kid, and he was also in that, you know. Um, so that one's one of my favorites that I've recently discovered of his, because every time I discover something of his, it's like, it sounds not completely different, but different enough from the other song I've heard of his, and I just love that about him. Like, you do, he can do almost any style and pull yeah. it off, you know. That's for the kill. I haven't really been thinking about songs I hate recently. Yeah. That's probably why I've been so happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice. Happier. <laughs> Um, That's a good. I want to use that. Yeah, uh, I always say whatever song TikTok has decided to decided to speed up has been ruined, but I don't agree with that anymore because I still love certain songs that yeah. they've t taken yeah. and made popular. But one song that kind of I had to take a break from. Not I'm not gonna kill it, but it's just kind of suffices for it for now since I can't think of anything to kill. Um, I'm gonna have to take a break from Eyes Without a Face by Billy Idol. I love that song so much, but people have taken it so recently. Yeah, I'm sure y'all have heard it. Oh, if yeah. you've been anywhere near social media. Nice. Sped up now, and I'm just yeah. like, I, I, I don't like the sped up thing. I'm, it's not for me. Oh. You know, the sped up song thing that's going on. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just not, I don't know. Some sound okay. Just, so Eyes Without a Face, they, they play at double speed? Yeah, something. like they really? did, they're doing that now or something. That's why I've had to like, that's kind of, wild. Yeah, it's weird. What What do you think that song is about? I've always wondered. Like, Isn't it based off the movie? the movie? There's a movie. There was a movie called Eyes Without a Face, I think. Oh, was it? Yeah, oh. I forget what it's about. I think it's, 
I think it was a horror movie about like plastic surgery or something. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I had uh, I had uh, resurrected a, a Billy Idol song, Sweet Sixteen, a while back. Oh, that's a good one. I love that song. I still love I that really song. I really like his songs. I do. It's just I don't know. Social media just has a way of over. I like you know, like you said, you used to love songs that are now so overplayed and you can't listen to them. Yeah. And sometimes that happens, but sometimes it comes back and I really enjoy it. Yeah, good, good, good. Uh, yeah, good kills, good, uh, good resurrection. Uh, so I'm gonna kill. I mean, actually wasn't the one I was going to do, but I'm having a I'm having a I'm, I'm having a smally moment. I can't remember the name of it. Um, and I and I and I had I had a little backstory to it too. It's gone. <laughs> it, it'll come back to me. But the song I'm going to kill is by a band called Sublime, and it's called Santeria, oh. and it's overplayed. And it probably might it may have been a good song at one time. I don't know. Sure. But, I was like. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, and, but you also have to remember too, uh, playing in the clubs for many, 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 many moons, that song was played so badly and so often at such incredible volumes that <laughs> it's, uh, anyway, it's, it's, uh, I'm going to try to go a little nicer, but I hate it. God, Santeria. Uh, and I, I know, hello, Kelly Bates, not going to be happy about that. I don't know why, but I just have a feeling that was my guy. Anyway, sorry, Kim. Uh, I ain't got no crystal ball. Oh, yeah. man. That's, Hate it. Hate it. That's the first thing I'm listening to. Do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll put it on right now. You're gonna, you, you guys knock it out. me blaring it all the way back to Contrabalance. Yeah. Contrabalance? What's that? That's his, that's his baby. That's his son. Uh, you got to come check it out. Oh, that's the one. Right. Yeah. Are we going to are are we gonna, are we gonna slap from there? Let's laugh at her. Anytime. We're going to slap from there. Ladies and gentlemen, announcement. Breaking news here on Slappercast, episode 223. We're going to do a... We're going to do a, an episode with some very dear friends of ours at Contro Balance in Houston, Texas. Sully, Sully, oh, that's actually Woodlands. But who cares? It's just... We'll, we'll see if we can... Uh, I know the owner's wife real well we'll see if we can get you a tour but I I, I love that place <laughs> that place is special anyway so, so that's it now some uh, so I'm going to shine a light on is uh, well it was a toss up but yeah I mean, it's uh, I had to do a Dean Martin I was going to do a Frank Sinatra I was going to do something old a friend of ours had sent me this link to an article about the controversy that is surrounding Delilah of all songs and that song is taking heat because people are offended by the lyrics. You know, I felt I felt the life in my hand and she loved no more. And I'm just cringing for these simpletons, for these absolute cretins that cannot it's like, see this for a piece of work. It's, it's, a, it's a, a story. Well, it's a story. Come on. Can I add to that? Please just do. That's wait that's till a, they find out what every step you take by the police is about. Yeah, wait break, yeah, take, we talk yeah. To, yeah, wait till they find out what that's about when they get yeah. offended about, you know. Something like that. Yeah. You know, there's so many but, messages yeah, like exactly. that in those songs that came from similar times or older. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. you know. But um, people are, are are people are now saying to themselves, "Well, I'm offended, so this song can't be bad." Guess what? Then you don't listen to the motherfucking song. Yeah. End the fucking story. Oh, it's so it's so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I'm just uh, I was laughing because I was thinking, you know, what other songs, you know, I'm glad that we didn't put the lighter notes in Blackmatic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with, with our lyrics. Is, oh, is, God. Uh, I, I can't even speak your language and I'm offended. Yeah. <laughs> so going way back to uh, sunny old Houston, Texas, back in the 90s, early 90s, um, a friend of mine was a manager at Cactus. Her name was Sue. Uh, lovely, lovely young lady. Was and, back when it was at its original location. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she was actually, she was there right at the end of the original location. Yeah, so uh, Cactus Records, we've often, often, often gloated about how wonderful it is and how important they are to the music scene in Houston. Yeah. It was such a thrill to see Standards and Blackmatic on the top shelf in that in that wonderful So Anyway, yeah. so uh, Sue was a manager, but back when it was CDs and tapes and VHS rentals yeah. and... Yeah, all kinds of stuff that you kids have no idea what I'm talking about. She gave me, she would give me these, uh, these uh, demo 
CDs. So the record companies would send out these promo packages with a bunch of free CDs and you could listen to, you know, give them to the managers and they, they could then d- decide where they went in the store and what had parental lyrics or, you know. Anyway, I, I was given it one of, one of the many, many, many CDs that I received from Sue. And I told the Queen Track story uh, uh, when, uh, when they played at the summit and it was press only in the backstage. She got me a press pass. She got me backstage to Iron Maiden. But it was press only. She got me backstage to, you know, it was that. And then also the, there's a couple of really, there's a, there's a wonderful Elvis cutout, yeah. cardboard cutout in the, the woodshed. Thank you, David. It's near, nearly five feet tall, this cardboard cutout. And it's got all the people, all the names on the back of the people that worked at the store at the time would say, uh, I want this, you know, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. They're, they all claimed it. Sue knew who the biggest Elvis fan was in town, <laughs> so it belongs to me. And it's just, it really is, it's a treasure. It's a treasure, it's, you know, it's just that. So, this is a whirlwind of information, but I know we can keep up because this is Labracast 2, 2, 3, and you're here with us. I'm sure. So, uh, we have uh, the, one of the many CDs I received was uh, the capital collection of these old Sinatra, Gene Martin, Sammy Davis. It had a, like 30 tracks on it. It was one of those massive, you know, scenes. and uh, one of the songs on there was by, well, the, the one that I like, I, I'm a huge Dean Martin fan. Dean Martin to me was the best voice and the funniest. And I think Sammy Davis Jr. was the funniest, but I think Dean Martin had the best voice. And I think uh, closely followed Mick Berry and Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis Jr. on drums, are you kidding me? Oh my, anyway, so I can't, as you can tell, I can't, I'm just gonna go with Love and Marriage. I hate that song, but I just, it's so well, it's so well done. And the, the feel of that song, dun, 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 dun. it's trudgy, it's gloomy, it's thick, but it's still not a downer. And it's it's one of those. It, uh, uh, I never saw the TV show. Married with Children. I, I never saw it. Not one episode. What? No, never saw it. I didn't. I don't, don't, don't watch TV. I've never seen any of the America's Got Herbie or Talent. American, you know the the, <laughs> the Bob Saget. Yeah, never seen any of that. Funny, never. Not one. Zero. America's Funniest Videos. Uh, never seen that. I never seen that. Uh, I've never seen one episode of. Uh, it's my favorite. All those. Walking Dead and Walking Dead and Breaking Bad gave us from nothing, 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 none of those. Anyway, I just don't like it. So, movies, yes, I'll go I'll watch a thousand. But uh, anyway, so that was my that I was on an hour and a half too long. Dear Mr. Editor, can you cut down to two minutes? <laughs> okay, so rapid fire, best gangster movie you've ever seen. Go, the Untouchables. Untouchables. Oh, Untouchables. I was gonna say Untouchables. It's up there. Better than Casino. Uh, Untouchables is better than Casino. I don't know. Casino's pretty good. Casino's okay. Good. It's not here. Do you have a... Do you have a... I don't know. I, I mean, Godfather, to me... I don't, uh, think, I, I don't think I've even seen that one yet. Uh, yep. Oh, my gosh. Not yet. You have to show out. me. But yeah. Uh, I, oh, yeah. I'm not Tremendous. very well versed in gangster movies. I think one of the reasons Untouchables jumps to mind is because I have very vivid memories of going to see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the music in it. Okay, best Western. I mean, music what about and what about like Heat? Could that be counted as a gangster movie? The guys that... Yeah, see, yeah. Oh, I love heat. That's yeah. a good one. Uh, best, uh, best, best Western. Best Western. The good, the, the bad, the ugly. Tombstone. I like Tombstone. Tombstone. I like Tombstone. Uh, you can do the same too. You can uh, I'm gonna do one. Yeah. You're probably gonna go ah, but I would big Young Guns. Yeah, I would go. Uh, yeah, Young Guns. I haven't seen it, but uh, you know, it's, bon, it's Bon Jovi soundtrack. But yeah, yeah. Nah, Young Guns, dude. See? One and two. I like them both. Wow. Oh man, there's that one scene dude, where he's like. Oh, dude, it's so good. He's got the gun in front of him. He's like, you are not a god. And he's like, why don't you pull the trigger and find out? I'm like, oh, my God, dude. It's so good. Oh, uh, what was the one that... Young Guns, man. You don't like I'm, that? I'm going with no, not, not the slightest. Oh, man. And now I like it less. What was the one That's Tarantino nice. did a couple of years ago? Oh, yeah. The, the, the yeah. cabin. Django Unchained was... Oh, that was good. I mean, yeah. that, that's pretty... Uh, anything Tarantino. But the Hateful Eight. The Hateful, hateful Eight, eight yeah. Hateful eight, eight, that was good. good. 
The yeah. one I, the one I'm gonna go with is the Outlaw Josie Wales, only because oh, yeah. only because my dad took me to that one and it was one of those things yeah. I was like, I get to see tits in him. Oh yes! <laughs> that was only that big. And uh The Unforgiven I have. Unforgiven was good, yeah. but but Josie Wales to me was the that was a okay, keep going. Uh favorite, favorite horror movie of all times. First one that comes to her, or all Shining. Shining, good That's one. A good oh, one. I, I used movie. to be obsessed with that movie. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go uh, Exorcist. Blair Witch. Mm. Blair Witch, good one. Um, <laughs> Don't either. say Slapper Cast. I'm gonna say Midsummer. Dude, Summer never saw it. By Ari Aster. I'll have to show it to you. Oh, I, you told me about that. Yeah, Connor yeah. Connor and I love that movie. Okay. And his other movie, Hereditary. Connor, I, I who's that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Um, okay. I'll, I'll put Jaws up there. Jaws. For horror? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that okay. always freaked me out. Okay. Um, I thought that was comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, another one was uh, when I was a kid. It was Chucky. When Chucky came out, I was always as a kid. Was that like, a Muppet Show series? I think so. Okay, that one. I uh, okay, got. favorite comedy. Of, now this is gonna be hard. And don't say Monty Python because. Oh, you're gonna definitely go. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. I will. Sure. I know. Yeah. I will. Trading sure. places. That's a man, that's a good one. That's a good one. Favorite comedy, Tara. Mm, you have to come back to me. Don't say Slapper Cast. Okay, I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm gonna say uh, Life of Brian. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I got a tie between two. Can I say yeah, two? Yeah, you got two. two ten. I'm gonna go. I'm going Mall Rats and Dumb and Dumber. Okay, well I'm gonna do two. Do a Mall Rat. You, I thought two. I thought you said. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, oh my. Oh, and, and I gotta like go. And I gotta go. Pink pa- <laughs> I gotta go. Yeah. Pink Panther. That's, that's, like that's fun. It's Peter, fun. Peter Sellers. <laughs> Panther. Go. Oh yeah, I knew you like. <laughs> yes. I smiled. <laughs> I'm just thinking this is on top of your head. This is like lightning round. Oh. Go. You got one? I don't have a favorite comedy, favorite comedy. Like movie. I'm not big on comedy movies themselves. Oh. I, I like comedians. Interesting. Maybe I can okay, fill in favorite, with that. Favorite comedian? Uh, oh. Doug Stanhope. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> answer. Yeah. And, um, can, well, can we tag him? Yeah. Doug Stanhope and um, my recent favorite, or I have two other recent favorites. Um, what's his name? We have his book. Uh, Sam oh, Talent. Oh, Sam Talent. Yes, He's yes, amazing. Yes. What's and, the name of the book? Uh, Running the Light. Running the Light. I still need to read that. I'm, you haven't <laughs> read it? I only got a few pages in and I got distracted. Uh, uh, but I have, now that it's summer, I have more free time. And then a uh, younger one is uh, Trevor Wallace. Is that his name? Trevor Wallace? Yeah, he's younger. He's like more college student oh. aimed. Okay. Uh, favorite comedian? Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Okay. I think I'm going to go Bill Burr. Bill maybe, Burr? Okay. Maybe even Tom Segura. I like Tom Bill Segura. Burr. Yeah, yeah you know, it's funny when huh? we hear Tom Segura. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy. When, when we were, uh, when we were, when we were interviewing our, our good friend, Doug Stanhope. <sighs> God, it goes wild. Well. Yeah, our good friend. The big uh, Yeah, we, uh, and the first the, we were talking about comedians, you go, who, who do you guys like? Billy Burr? Billy Burr, is that your, you know, and he, he's, uh, he is so connected. Doug is so connected with musicians and artists, and you know he's just he. But he he knows he just knows everybody. It, 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 was, it was amazing when you said Bill Burr. Like yeah, mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna say for for the kids, for for people that don't like the the bad language, Jim Gaffigan or oh, or, yeah. or, or Brian Regan. Mm-hmm. You know that thing, and then just for original top drawer. That, you know, I, of course, Doug Stanhope is, is going to be the top for me just because I adore the guy. But uh, uh, Richard Pryor, top, oh, yeah, yeah, top, yeah, yeah. top, top. You know, for for I mean, I would, I would put Eddie Izzard up there. Yeah, he's pretty, pretty original. Uh, Ricky Gervais. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah there's um, a lot of good ones. Okay, yeah, and, and again, this is like trying to, uh, you know, let you pick your favorite song of all time. It's just it cannot be done. Yeah. You know, but again, this this is great. This is a great start. I would like to ask our dear friends here at Slappercast if you would like to join in. Just favorite movie, favorite comedian, favorite, yeah, and, and, and it just, just yeah, movie. doesn't matter. Yeah, it could be horror. Or, you know, favorite, movie, favorite movie, favorite comedian. Just S- want to just want to know who you're. Sci-fi. Sci-fi. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> sci-fi Armageddon. He rips off the patch at the end of the movie. Dude, tear up he just, ruined, he right. just ruined it for everybody. I don't care. You don't tear up at that point. You soulless. What's your favorite Genesis song? <laughs> What's your favorite piece of string? What's your favorite humming noise? 
What's your what? favorite scab on your... Hey, stop it. Let's just cut, 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 cut. <laughs> What's your favorite Julia Roberts movie? Go. Uh, okay. Least favorite actor. There you go. There, there you go. go. Least favorite? Least favorite. Least favorite. Of all actor. time. <laughs> don't say Sandra Bullock. Don't say, <laughs> don't say Julia Roberts. I don't. I feel like I, I may be able to guess That's her. A, that's a challenge. Uh, I've, I, I, there are so many. There are so many in that fucking Rocket to Mars. Is that your favorite sci-fi? Rocket to Mars. No, that's just my, my, my way of disposing of all these fuckers. Sure. <laughs> There's nothing worse than, than uh, going to see a movie and, I, you know, not knowing who's in it. And then fucking Julia yeah. Roberts appears in the screen. You're like, fuck, I gotta go. I gotta leave. There was a, there was a show back, back in time. It might have been bad TV. But every, every movie they were making fun of. They would say, in a world. They would start with that, and it would be, you know, starring something, something, and Shelley Long, who she was in every. Shelley Long was from Cheers back in the day. And they would always have her as the actress. That I, was, I was like, that's that's pretty. It's hard to think. I'm trying to think, like an actor I would dislike enough to, to name. I can't. I don't think. Obviously, can't remember any names right now. Anyway, Kenneth Branagh. I know that you would. Yeah. It's just it's funny to me that you have a you have a like a, a rogues gallery list of actors yeah. you can't stand. I, and to me, it's like I'm trying to think of like actors I would be annoyed enough by like that to, to name have to be like somebody like you know like if you go to a party and you're like oh man why did he have to be yeah because otherwise you, you're looking forward to the movie. And, but I can't, I just can't think. I think most of the actors I'm probably annoyed by that way. I don't know their names. Yeah. What do you see? So I'd be sitting in a, in a, in a movie theater. And this movie comes on. It looks decent. And then they go, boom, this, act, this, 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 and then fucking Julie Roberts or, or, or. What makes that start? Like, why does that start? Like, is it the first bad movie? You see him in an interview? Like, where does that start? A couple, couple have been on dates and you go see a, you know, go to their choice and you go and, and then this uh, massive horse face shows up on the thing and he's going, ah, this is not a horror. But now it is. I just. No weight to their draft. Case in point, a Marlon Brando, a uh, a uh, Judy Dench, or a, a Sigourney Weaver, or a, you know, uh, you know, De Niro, Pacino, something like that. They just own the fucking screen, and then you get this big bag of fucking nuts and bolts and just go. And it, it really is. It's, it's like a hammer with a wig. And you're just going, what the fuck are you doing? Is this title? There's no, it's like you got the job. I, I, I didn't even know how you get the job. Um, but Harvey, Harvey Weinstein knows that. Yeah, I was going to say, Weinstein knows. But, uh, but, you know, it's just, and, and it's, and it's and it just takes all the fucking air out of the room in a bad way. And it just ruins the whole fucking, you know, the script, everything. It's all ruined because of one person, you know. My take. And I, tell, I know I'm too opinionated for. Yeah, I know there's somebody. I, I can't. There's got to be somebody. Yeah, I don't know in that category, but I, I can't bring well, them on. Oh, okay, but I'll give you. I'll give you an overrated actor. Somebody who I've never seen do a good job. No, I can't say that because I've seen a couple. I was going to say Willem Dafoe. I saw that. Yeah. I saw about five minutes of a movie called Boondock Saints, and what? it was the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen. What? Yes, the worst. No way, dude. Yes. I like it. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. When you get the when, two brothers, dude. Yeah, when your voice drops and you get a little, little no, 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 yeah, yeah come I, hate, on, I dude. hate it. I hate it. It's so bad. Oh. And it's such a, it's such a, it, it, it's such a Disney uh, <laughs> script. You know, it's such a. Well, now Willem Dafoe was awful at that. I can't. And he, and he was like, he was embarrassed to be there. Do you think, do you think he just falls back on the fact that his face is so, so iconic? Leans on his face too much. <laughs> I, uh, somebody leaned on his face. No, he. Uh, um, God, I like him. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, he was terrible at that. Because I started to think, but I've seen him play a couple of villains, and he was really good. Javier Bardem. Oh God. I mean, what a grit. Uh, I, I don't know if there was a better villain than in because my ex next door neighbor uh, told me he, when he came back from seeing No Country for Old Men. Yeah. He he said oh, I, he said I don't want to say anything. But I'm just gonna say I think I saw the best villain I've ever seen. I was like, yeah, that's you're full of shit. There's no way. And I went and I saw the thing. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, movies earlier. That's that's not really a western. It's not really a horror film, but it kind of classifies as you can kind of call it both. You know, I I, I just call it the, you know, like ultra drama or something because it's it's there's no blood, not a lot of blood. There's not a lot of maybe maybe the okay I said no. 
Uh, did you see that newer movie with him in it? The, the Northman? No. With William Dafoe? No. Fuck, that's the worst movie I've seen in a theater in a long time. Okay. So bad. I, well, I almost left. You're I was welcome. like... You're welcome. Yeah. It was like... Dude, the previews made it look like it was going to be kind of a Viking-style movie. That thing was stupid. I'm okay. sorry. It was just okay. like creepy... Out of that field. Get ready. Everybody ready? Yeah. I, I wish I didn't do drugs. These questions would, would be better. You're making a movie today. You've got to call one actor to sell that fucking movie. You've got to call one great actor to sell a movie. Now, what is the movie? It's kind of like along the lines of No Country for Old Men. And you can't get Woody Harrelson or Javier Bardem or, Javier or um, Josh, Josh Brolin, right? Because of the... But who, who, do you, who do you call? Who do you first call? Jared Harris. Jared Harris. Uh, Good oh, one. Man, I don't know. Uh, oh, Tommy Lee Jones. Holy fuck. Oh, yeah. What a beast. Yeah, no, they were all fantastic. Do you know who... Uh, 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 Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Always great, excellent. Great, great, great. And the guy that I was thinking of this second... What about Jeff Bridges? <laughs> Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges, to me, is always kind of watery eye. I mean, yeah. I just... He is good. Yeah. But he's never good, he's, like... You he's, know, he's one of those one-note actors now. That's what that's him. And now, he's even he's like he's, he's changed. Like now he's like old Jeff Bridges. And, you know, when he was younger, he had, he had the young Jeff Bridges thing he would do. Kind of like a uh, oh shit. It's like Jeff Goldblum. Oh, I like always him. plays the same character. I love I him, detest. but he, he's always the same. I, I detest. Don't, you don't like Jeff him? Goldblum? No, I hate him. <laughs> Everything. It's a, just very stylized. He's he's the American Hugh Grant. Good for nothing. <laughs> Good for nothing except wiping your fucking boots off. What up? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> now, who, there's a guy. There's a guy. Uh, I wish you, you should get this tower. These these guys are fucking. They're driving like they're from Dallas. Um, there's a guy, um, an actor, and he was in a movie with um, Harvey Keitel, and uh, Harvey Keitel is another one. Oh my God, Mr. Wolf, Pulp Fiction. Oh my God, Winston Wolf. Um, he was in a movie with Harvey Keitel, and he was in a movie with, uh, he always looks like a young kid. He looks like a rough David Spade, kind of a, kind of the same build, uh, but he's always fucking mean. He's, um, what's his name? He's always mean? He's always mean, he's always plays the bad guy. And he's a great bad guy. Always a bad guy, and I can see his face, he always smokes. Uh, it's coming, it's coming, it, it's, there's a, Editor, editor has to do a lot of work on this one. I, I, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll find him again in a minute. This is not me thinking of it. I just thought of Steve Buscemi. I love oh, yeah. Steve Buscemi. Fargo. Yeah. Woo! God, what is this? All right, he's so good. Oh, this is too good. This is too good. You, if you've got a favorite actor, favorite actress. Mm, it's kind of hard. Don't say Air Bud. <laughs> no, of course not. I know what you're thinking. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> actors is hard because I haven't been really focusing on actors. Okay. Like directors, maybe. Okay, who's your favorite oh, director? Better still, yes. Directors, yeah. Directors, like, yeah. I like looking at directors a little more. <coughs> they're the real. Yeah. Even the writers are the real brains behind yeah. the. You know, actors are important too. I'm just saying, you know, I like focusing on directors a lot. Favorite um, director would be. Uh, my consistent favorites would be Gaspar Noé. He's a French director. Oh. Uh, that was another one of my favorite horror movies he did called Climax, where it's these... I told you about this, where it's this group of dancers who are celebrating for their big competition coming up. And it's all in French, so you have to, you know, pay attention to what's being said if you don't understand. And they... Someone has drugged their sangria with LSD, and they don't know who it is, and they're all freaking out, and it's just this whole psychological thing, and it, it's like... It looks like it's all shot in one take in a lot of different scene parts, and it's really freaky. It nice. sucks you in, and it's like, what's gonna happen next? You it's know, climax. Yeah, and then he's done a couple other ones. He's done a couple of popular ones actually that aren't horror related. Um, so what's his name again? Gaspar Noé. Oh. Okay. And you know, he's still making movies to this day. I think and he's coming out with a couple more of them. Him and Ari Aster, the one I mentioned before, yeah. Midsummer and Hereditary. He did those two. Um, Excellent. And then I kind of like the cl uh, classic, like Stanley Kubrick. He's yes. good. He's cool. really good. Yes. He's always going to be a favorite of mine. You know. Excellent. I, I, I've got to go with Tarantino just yeah. just because 
paint just right around. Yeah, when I when I stumbled across pulp parks, um, well, it was, didn't stumble across pulp fiction, but um, at Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, I, I was just not expecting that. I was expecting it to be something. I didn't know it would be everything that it was, and it is. And the soundtrack and the actors and pulling these John Travolta's out of the gutter and shining them up and sending them out just blowing me the fuck away again. So, um, and again, of course, the Kubrick's and the I, I, you, you, yeah. you, just, you can't deny that Kubrick's amazing. Yeah, but no two films are alike. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. yeah. My favorite director is Terry Gilliam. Terry, oh, classic genius. Yeah, Wizard. Do you, have, do you have a director? I, I mean, Tarantino's probably top, but I think my, my plus one, who's the guy who directed uh, the first Transformers? Michael, Michael Bay? Bay? I was a huge first Transformers movies fan. Uh, I like those kind of movies. You know, I know there's CGI and stuff, but man, I, I was big on that. So I'm going to give props to that movie. All right. Gotcha. So gotcha, good. gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I love it. Huh? I yeah. love it. You know, I'm just that's what it's about. Too. That's what I need. It's, it's art. It doesn't matter if it's uh, it's freaking awesome. Dude. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it, uh, if anybody knows this, but Madonna actually uh, acted in a few. She was... All right, cut, 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 cut. Was it Willem Dafoe in that one? Yeah. 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 And, you, and, and the funny <laughs> thing is, when they when they got undressed, you couldn't tell either of them apart. That was oh, weird. God. It was weird. Top to bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Back, baby. Okay. Uh, one shout out again to, to speaking to David Bowie and I'm not saying this just because he's David Bowie's son Duncan Jones is actually a very talented director and I'm very much looking forward to whatever he's working on now I don't know the last movie he put out I'm trying to remember what it was called I think it was Mute it was only, it only came out on streaming and that was it had a very Kubrick feel but it was the, 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 the subject matter was so disturbing that I, I had a hard time really getting into it. Yeah. But its first two films before that, uh, Moon and uh, Source Code, are two. Uh, they're both science fiction. One of them is sort of more like a thriller, sci-fi thriller. They're both just great, really, really good. So I can't wait to see what he does next. Yeah, about mine, what I mentioned, Gaspar Noé. Some like no, you don't need to. Um, <laughs> Sorry, uh, you're good. Gotcha. Um, but uh, that Gaspar, no, Gaspar in a way, it's just he's kind of the director. Where it's like his thing is disturbing realism, I guess. Cool. And uh, a lot of people, I'm convinced, if you know, you can appreciate his work because it takes a lot of creativity and you know thought to do, uh, especially movies that like that that carry such depth yeah. and disturbing content, even you know. And there's some where I'm just like, if you even smiled during this film, I'm convinced something's wrong with you because it's meant, you know, it's just some stuff's meant to make you uncomfortable. It's meant to make you question things. You know, it even went as far as what they put in the soundtrack. They would put frequencies that were designed to make you uncomfortable in the scenes that were especially, wow, like, supposed to be disturbing just to make sure, oh, we're going to make you uncomfortable and this is, this is how we're going to do it. It's like a blackguard show. <laughs> Nah, that's gonna make you have fun. That's gonna make you uh, so wanna have fun. No, to yourself. Keep her around. Yeah, so that's another thing. It's just, I like, I can appreciate all the different directors and what they do to make the impact stay, stick. That's cool. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all stripes, we got a, we got a Brendan sighting here, the, the captain speaking. So, so our question to you, fine slapper cast crew, is favorite actor favorite oh I'm gonna just one more your favorite musician that's an actor right be it Bowie or be it I know I don't I don't chance that's gonna be musician that's an actor yes yeah. turn and it doesn't matter either way you know it doesn't matter if you turn so favorite favorite movie favorite actor or favorite musician that's an actor what was the other one comedian and we just want to know what you think. Just want to thank you all for uh, tuning in. Yes, thank you. We will be uh, at Contrabalance very, very soon, recording with some dear friends of ours that a lot of you know, everybody should know, and hopefully after Slapcast you'll get to know a little bit better. So that that's going to be uh, it's going to be coming up, and uh, we're going to get young Heidi Riggs back on the show too because she's coming in next month 
for a quick turnaround. We're gonna do some recording. We're gonna do some rocking and rolling. So we'll post that. And uh, you know, from uh, from your friends here at Slappercast, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to our wonderful camera person. And, uh, and as always, Patreon. Thank you. And yes, uh, you know the gang. The gang. We we love you. every one of you. Thanks for thanks for being a part of this. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Yeah. See you next week. See ya. Cheers. So before they come to break down the door, oh forgive me, Delilah, I just couldn't take anymore. Tip that staff, we love you. Thank you so much.